roots here. Uh, Nathan, you guys, you and Gregory Daniel, uh, seem like you work pretty darn hard. Uh, give us what it was like as you went under that uh, kilometer to go, and then obviously uh, the fight to the line. Yeah, uh, I attacked the breakaway with about 20k to go, and uh, Greg followed me, and it was awesome to have Greg with me. I, uh, I raced with him on Axel's team a couple of years ago, so it was really cool to have him with us. And uh, we worked well together until the base of the climb, and then I, uh, I just hit it, and uh, yeah, until about 800 meters ago, I was solo, and I thought, ah, oh, just maybe I'll hold on for this, but you know, they were coming up fast, and I laid it all out there, and I was happy with my performance, and even though I didn't come away with the win, I was still super happy with it. And then one before we open it up, um, talk about the altitude and the climb. I mean, the climb wasn't you know terribly steep, but uh, it's relative to the uh, the altitude. Maybe can you talk a little bit about the climb and then the uh, the altitude against that climb? Right. So I mean, we're climbing up what past ten thousand feet. So you have I had to drop my watts a good forty watts below what I normally ride at sea level. So. You know, that's what makes a climb so hard. Yeah, it wasn't that steep, but when you're climbing at 10,000 feet, it makes it twice as hard. And, and uh, for me, I suffered altitude too, so it's really hard for myself. Questions? Uh, how, how long did you live in Colorado Springs, and do you still have family there, or do you ever go back and visit? Uh, my grandparents lived there until about 10 years ago. I, I was born there, and I spent three months. I can't even really claim it because I spent most of my life in Tennessee. But I used to go back uh, once or twice a year up until, yeah, a couple of years ago. Yeah, Nate, can you talk a little bit about <clears throat> How uh, the Candell Garmin team is going to take on the rest of the week. Uh, BMC looks pretty good with Rohan and Brent uh, for the GC. So, what will the plan be for your team? Yeah, uh, I think we're going to stay super aggressive. I think we're going to obviously look for a lot of breakaways, look for our opportunities. Uh, Davide had a really good ride. He passed me right at the top. I think he was within 30 seconds of the leaders. So, he's definitely an option still for the GC. Yeah, BMC is super strong. and it's going to be hard to deep throw them, but we'll keep throwing stuff at them the whole week. And quickly, we'll rotate uh, uh, Rohan in, and then we'll go to a question. Uh, Rohan, talk about uh, the last kilometer up here, and uh, there's been a lot made about the altitude and how you feel at, at, uh, at this altitude. Uh, so open up your comments on, uh, on those two things. Uh, yeah, the last kilometer. Um, I think I was probably lucky that there was a big crowd uh, it sort of stopped the attacks a little bit I just sort of aimed for the crowd and made sure no one come around me uh, <laughs> then uh, then when I uh, when I saw about 300 meters ago I started to basically I attacked from the front and I saw in the uh, um, it's called the TV on the finish line I saw Brent was Brent was sort of next to me so I just I tried to get on him but I was he was just going straight past me, and uh, he was on a mission to win, which is great. We uh, we got one too, and sort of surprised myself. Um, rode pretty well from the bottom uh, to the top, and and I was expecting I was expecting to blow at least three three k to go, or people to start attacking and and shell me early. So you saw yourself on the big screen. Yeah, the, I saw myself. Shot. I got to watch myself race um, <laughs> while I was racing. Uh, that was, <laughs> yeah, uh, th that's sort of how I figured out that Brent was there. I was in, uh, I was in La La Land and seeing seeing stars, you could say. Um, in that last last couple of k, that's for sure. Nate, it was a pretty long day for you. Did you, did you feel like the last closing kilometers you could pull it off? I did. Uh, when I got to the base of the climb, I knew I needed two minutes step chance, and we had 240. So I thought, you know, there's a chance that I could hold this off. And even up until 2K to go, I still thought there was a chance, but, but BMC was driving the uh, rest of the group, and, and uh, they had a bit more gas than I did at the end. But, you know, that's bike racing. Uh, Rohan, in the um, pre-race press conference, you talked about not really knowing how you were going to be performing at altitude. Um, after your breakaway, 
uh, yesterday, there were some writers in the press conference that kind of joked about that. He said, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Rohan doesn't know how he's going to do at altitude. Um, so, I mean, are you playing possum? Are you, are you, uh, you know, serious with these comments about really not knowing your form, or is that, uh, you know, a way to throw a curveball at your competition? I, I honestly, I was in Park City, um, and it was it was probably about four or five days ago now. Um, I was going up Guardsman, and <coughs> I was sitting on three hundred and. 300 to 330 watts, which is not not super high, and uh, my my heart rate was close to max. So that's that's sort of what I was judging my um, my form at altitude off of. And sure, like yesterday, um, I felt pretty good, and obviously today as well, uh, uh, I surprised myself. So um, look, obviously Brent Brent's shown he, he's strong and um, I'm still going to keep doing just just what I did for the last two days. Taylor, if any described you yesterday as a temperamental artist type, can you can you uh, maybe expand on that in terms of uh, how uh, how that came out today? Yeah. <laughs> Um, we uh, we rode together the other day, just us two, and uh, he told me I um I should get into art. Obviously, everyone knows he's getting into art and he's painting a lot. And uh, I sort of laughed, and uh, he said, "No, no, honestly, uh, I think you should, uh, especially when you're angry, Rowan, um, paint. It'll be it'll be beautiful." He said, uh, <laughs> "I'd bite out without even uh, looking at it." Um, look, uh, I have been known to sort of have a short fuse. Um, and I think I think cycling is is sort of the way um, I let that sort of anger out, and uh, that's sort of sort of my event. So I think that's what he was sort of talking about. This is um, you could say, in his words, my art is is cycling. Rowan, are these efforts effectively <coughs> practice for the time trial? You seem to be going really fast uphill. <laughs> um, I actually didn't plan on doing this today, uh, to be honest. I, uh, I I just sort of started riding. Um, Jelly Belly were on the front, and and I uh, I thought, stuff it, I'll, I'll go to the front and put my own tempo on, um, and hopefully, hopefully Brent's there <laughs> to sort of back me up at the at the end. Um, I honestly was thinking that I'd try a couple of days um, before to sort of ease off, ease off the gas and and save something for for that time trial. But I think uh, that sort of plan is possibly going to have to be thrown out the window, and I'm going to be going into a little bit tight. Uh, Rowan, uh, Brent, six seconds ahead of you now. How does that work within the team? Will you work for? Will the team ride for Brent, or will it protect both of you and then let you guys decide it in the time trial? I think obviously we don't want to throw um, both our bullets down the drain. Um, so I th look, we're going to do probably the same as what we've done for the last uh, two days, and um, I'll I'll probably put my hand up to work for him later on the stage and and do those sort of vital um, pulls or whatever I have to do on. Say like today, uh, and if we can if we can hold one too, we we will. But um, if either one of us wins, it's it's a uh, it's a good tour. It doesn't really matter who it is. It's BMC. Uh, Nathan, uh, I talked to Charlie after the race, and he said you did everything the way you were supposed to. But for you personally, is there anything you would have changed with the way? I mean, other than the end result, is there anything you would have maybe done differently today? No, I don't think so. I like, I think I did everything to my best ability. Uh, I laid it all out there. There wasn't any ounce of power left when the guys caught me. As you could see, they rode right by me. I couldn't even jump on their wheels. So, I don't think so. I mean, I think I rode it as well as I could have, and the end result is what it is. <coughs> any final questions, Brand? Uh, you've gone up to ten thousand feet. Have you gone off? up to 12,000 feet like you're going tomorrow. It's all the same over 3,000 meters, I think. <laughs> okay. <laughs>
Point well taken. Uh, only, only because I probably uh, um, I do I do train a lot on that time trial bike and and it feels just as comfortable as a road bike. I can get the same power out, if not actually more, on the time trial bike. So um, it's it's a specialty of mine. And uh, look, Brent Brent has been training and practicing on it a lot. Uh, in this past week especially that I've seen anyway and I think he's pretty motivated as you saw today to um, keep well not lose anything on that day that's for sure it's uh, it's going to be decisive I think um, uh, today there's only really 30 seconds back to guys like Formula um, so <coughs> if we can take time out and team uh, into the uh, if we can take time out of him in the time trial, um, that's that's even better. Uh, in the again in the previous is this thing on? Is in, in the previous press conference, you had talked about uh, Rio being a, a huge goal of yours, and then uh, progressing on to focus as a GC rider. Um, within that larger plan, then what role does Richmond have for you? Um, you know, what are your ambitions there, and who do you see as your uh, primary competition? Um, I I got an email from the Australian selectors and uh, Brad McGee um, to be more specific and uh, basically he sent it out to everyone anyway and just asked what our, our race program, our preparation for is um, leading into Worlds and uh, what our what our thoughts were. So I said, look, I my my two biggest goals are the team time trial and the time trial. Uh, I want to. One, we want to win that team time trial again, um, and then I want to, well, I want to win that time trial. Um, at worst, I want a medal. Um, road race, I said it's, it's probably, I think, not fair that I race the road race, um, and the reasons for that, are I'm I'm preparing for two 50k races uh, pretty well, and that's a 260k race. Um, what I, I probably wouldn't be able to do much for the team. Um, the race sort of starts after four hours, um, really, in um, reality. And uh, I'd be going by then, just like last year. Um, <coughs> my my body wouldn't be used to it, and I wouldn't have the kilometres in the legs. So I'd be um, I'd be I'd be dead after three three and a half four hours for sure. So I I, I question whether or not. I should actually be in that in that road race, and if there's a, a job early on that I could do, but if there is, maybe there's someone else that could do it as well, and then still help help in the finish. And the TTTs on uh, the opening Sunday on the 20th, and the uh, Elite Men's Time Trials on the 23rd uh, in Richmond, Virginia, for the Worlds. I got another one for you. Um, you know, these American races are experimenting with having shorter stages compared to the European, you know, Grand Tours, like the Tour de France and the Giro, where you find a lot of stages over 200K. Um, how does that change the dynamic, uh, the racing dynamics in these shorter races? And um, how does it impact your, your physiology in the body? Um, can you tell it? Can you see a difference or notice a difference? Yeah, um, I think being shorter, it's a lot more uh, aggressive and a lot more exciting. And I think you really can get the same result out of a 150k race as a as a 260k race. Um, and it, for the for the spectators, it's uh, not like a 10-man group gets up the road. They get 10, 15 minutes, and they slowly get brought back. And then there's a couple of attacks at the finish, and then someone wins. Um, whereas here, it's sort of you saw today there was a group of 10. Um, then two guys jumped across. Um, that we were playing cat and mouse a little bit. Uh, we had to sort of keep him fairly close, as you said, as um, Nate said. If he he knew he had about two minutes at the bottom of that climb, he he probably would have won the stage. Um, he had two minutes forty, and we we're just lucky that we had the firepower in the finish. So um, it's it's not like someone's suffering just to pedal at the finish. Um, it's more exciting and. And, and faster as well. Coming up. 
I guess one final question, uh, Ryan. Have you sur uh, surveyed the uh, time trial course in Breckenridge? Yeah, um, Neil, my coach, has given me a USB with a video of it. Um, I haven't actually looked at it. I, I'm pretty sure it's the same road as the day before correct. in the road race. Correct. Um, correct. And we did the same road uh, two years ago as well, when we went over Independence, right? Uh, yep, the before there, yes. Who's your pass? Yep, so we're Independence and we came down the last couple of climbs. Yep. So I know, I know the road fairly well. Um, I didn't enjoy it last time I did it, but uh, that that last climb's pretty steep from memory. Um, and it's going to be all about pacing before that and then and then uh, hitting over the top of that as quick as possible. Okay, we'll uh, open up real quick. Uh, Brent, um, <coughs> was there a moment when you crossed the finish line that you knew you won or uh, describe that? Uh, no, to be honest, I wasn't sure I won. Uh, the last time board we saw, I think it was to Nate Brown, uh, was a minute, and I think that was just over a kilometer to go, maybe a kilometer and a half, and uh, Rohan had me cross eye just biting my stem the whole time, so um, I wasn't really aware of when Nate came back or who was going on. I was just concentrated on doing uh, the best climb I could and holding Rohan's wheel, and then uh, about 500 meters to go, I, I actually caught my breath and felt recovered and uh, chucked it in the big ring and then um, just gave it everything I had to the line. And uh, I, obviously I was going for seconds also, so uh, no time to celebrate, but it's a good feeling. Questions? Uh, Brent, I already asked Rowan this, but uh, he's, he trails you now by six seconds. How does that affect your team strategy do they protect you, both of you, and then let you decide uh, in the time trial? Yeah, yeah good question. Um, I think we'll have to look at the entire GC tonight, um, look at the results. Uh, I think Rohan is um, obviously the favorite for the time trial, but we have two uh, really hard stages between now and then, um, and two of them that have proved to be pretty unpredictable also in the past. Uh, so just uh enjoy today um enjoy these first two days and then you know create a plan for the rest of the race and keep going like this brent can you describe for me your energy level coming up that last five mile pass there from keystone day basin i uh, yeah the energy level was was, was low um this, these guys were riding like machines all day uh they were they were incredible we had to, I had to keep telling them to slow down, not bring the brake back too quick. Um, yeah, they were hurting me, and they were surging over the climbs. And, uh, uh, yeah, I, did, just, I didn't, didn't really feel great all day, but um, I think a little bit of that is the altitude. And um, it was actually nice just to get to that last climb and um, have Rowan put the hammer down, and then, you know, then it's simple. You know, you, we just hold the wheel. We ride as hard as we can, and, and it's done. There's no more conserving at that point. Couple more questions. Yeah, Brent, just to sort of piggyback on Pat's question, um, I mean, it appears that the two of you are the strongest two in this race, and you're also very capable against the clock. And do you, is it could we see a scenario where it comes down to the Friday time trial in Breckenridge to determine the yellow jersey? Between? Yeah, it's it's possible. Uh, but like I said, uh, you know, tomorrow we finish um, with Independence Pass and a descent down into Aspen. And then the next day we start with Independence Pass and we have some, some really hard climbs toward the, towards the end. Um, Hoosier Pass is super high altitude. Last year we had that really nasty weather there. So uh, it's, it, it's by no means um, even, even close to over. Um, but, but I think we're in a good position. The team showed the past few days they're really strong. Rohan showed he's incredibly strong. And uh, I was pleased with how, obviously, how I rode today as well. So I think you know we couldn't ask for more up to this point, but uh, we we can't we can't take that for granted, and we can't be overly confident. Brent, you had the you guys heading into the dirt section. I think had the breakdown under two minutes. Was that on purpose, or <laughs> was that part of the hard riding? Uh, no, that that was those guys just shredding the front. Um, we had two of our young guys, uh, Killian Franchini, Manuel Senni, um, and then we also had Pete Stetna, who was incredible today. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen him walking walking to dinner the past few nights, but the guy's walking with a cane. 
and then he's up on the front and bringing the bringing the break back to two minutes. Um, so, yeah, that was a, that was just a situation of being you know maybe a little too excited. And um, you know when you get up on the front, you feel empowered and you want you want to ride hard. You want to you want to get in the moment. And uh, it's awesome to see those guys getting get excited to do that. But we also have to temper that, calm them down, and you know understand that today was a five hour day and we still have five more hard days after today as well. Brent, fourth in Austria, third in Utah. Can you describe the feeling, at, and second a couple times in Utah, can you describe the feeling when you finally realized you won the state? Uh, <laughs> yeah, this has been a long time in coming. Um, I, I feel like I've had a, a good good run of form and a good run of results, um, but that win has eluded me, and it's eluded me in a lot of different ways, um, breakaways and sprints on climbs. Um, so to get it with a summit finish and to get it on the back of such awesome teamwork, um, I, I couldn't imagine it being any better. Um, it's like Taylor said yesterday, it's, it's electric and it makes me feel alive and it makes me feel inspired. And this is what, uh, this is what makes all the tough times, uh, you know, fight through those and makes it feel worth it. Don't forget the second half out of me. <laughs> yeah, Rowan likes to remind me I was second in Alberta, which is a pretty good result considering he won. <laughs> That's right. The whole podium from the inaugural Tour of Alberta is at this race, uh, and they're all on the same team. Yeah. Damiano Caruso uh, is the third. Uh, congratulations, guys, on the 1-2 finish today, and we'll see you on the roads tomorrow. Thanks, guys.